What is good, vibe gang? It is your boy Rovis. We're gonna do. You like the shirt? It just came in. You like the shirt? It just came. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. I got two more. And guess what I'm wearing for the next two days? Facts. Now this is gonna be something a little different. This going. We're gonna take a different, a different route. In the in the in the Elvis uh, journey, real quick, one of my subscribers uh, uh, sent me this as a request. It's Elvis, a generous heart. It was a segment in a in a documentary, and this is part of the documentary. Uh, the documentary is like like an hour long, an hour and some change long. So I, I'm not gonna do the whole hour and some change. That's something that I can do for like a live. I'll do it on a live, but. You guys don't want to sit here and listen to me for... If it's an hour long, it's going to be a three-hour freaking reaction. You, you guys ain't going to watch, want to watch that. But whenever I go live, bring it up to me and we'll play it and we'll spend the whole hour and a half talking about it. How about that? But one of my subscribers really wanted me to do this one. So I got you. It's Elvis, a generous heart. And, and what a perfect one to react to. With all the generosity that I've been getting in the last couple of weeks. Miss Helen, Joey from the Bronx, Miss Candy, Jennifer, uh, uh, Valerie, Sammy, the, the, the extremely cool. All you guys have showed me so much generous generosity through this past couple of weeks, months. It, it's, it's... Nah, I don't want to get sentimental. Federico, man, I don't want to do that. Federico, cut the beat, man. We're going to get right into it. I promise I'll try to keep the talking to a minimum, but I can't promise that. <laughs> I promise that I can't promise it. How about that? Elvis, my brother, it is on you. Let's go. in Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, he got word that a little boy in the hospital uh, was was dying, and uh, that he wanted to see see Elvis, and he couldn't make it to the show. He was he was too sick to get to the show, and uh, so uh, we loaded up in, in in cars and we went to the hospital. And Elvis was wearing uh, Elvis met, met this little boy and talked to him, and and uh, he was wearing a, a cross that was made of garnets. And um, he took it off and he gave it to this child. And it was a real touching, touching moment, just uh, an hour or so before the show. When my wife was... See what I mean, man? That, you see, that's the type, that's what makes him the king. You understand? Like it, I know he he doesn't like being called the king of rock and roll, but that's what a king does. He helps his kingdom. That's what makes him the king of 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 everything, the king of humanity. Forget about rock and roll of humanity. That boy. It's moments of losing, uh, 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 of leaving this earth. He has a performance that he has to go do. And everything came to a halt because he wanted to go visit that kid. And, and just give him some type of happiness before he goes. He didn't have to, do you don't understand in that situation how busy mentally a performer is right before he's about to go and perform. And he said, nah, let's do this first. 
I'm good. I'm good. I'm Elvis. I don't. I don't. I, I don't get nervous no more, baby. I'm Elvis. That's home where I'm about to go. I'm gonna work. Like, this is more important. That's the type of man right there. That's the type of man. That's the type of human being that we all need to learn how to be. And you know why? I'm so happy. I'm so blessed because I have Elvis all around me. And I'm not talking about the materialistic stuff, you guys. Elvis created you guys to have that heart, to have that generosity. To You guys don't owe me anything, and you guys don't have to do the, half the things you guys do for me. But that's what Elvis does for other people. They, he gives that to other people. I could, the only thing that I could promise is, is that whenever I make it big and whenever I have the money, the, the chances of me being the same way is very high. I'm already doing it and I'm broke. <laughs> I, the way I see it is, I try, and I, and I said this when I got sober. And, and me knowing how, my, how much I ruined a lot of people's lives and how much I lied to people and everything when I was on drugs and all that other stuff. When I got sober, I said to myself, I need to help somebody every single day to make up for the lives that I destroyed. Well, I didn't really destroy them. I don't, I don't want to put that impression out there that I, that I did something that horrible, but... You know, just the, the trust and the love and everything. I took advantage of it. And so I every day I try to help one person a day. It doesn't matter who it is. It, it doesn't matter. If I see somebody in need and I have it, I pay it for it. And it, it's just difficult because there's a lot of people that are subscribed to me that, you know, that I talk to, that I'm having conversations with because they're going through a lot in their lives and everything, and I wish that I could just just give them everything I have, but unfortunately, realistically, I can't. I, I I have to take care of my family before before I could go and do something as big as that. But I do want to do something. I use I do want to use my page, my channel, to pay it forward. And I and I'll have to talk to the people because I don't want to put their business on blast. Or anything like that. But I want to start doing something like that. Like a, like a fundraiser for certain individuals. Like once a month. To help them get out from where they're at. I, I, I want to start doing stuff like that. But I don't want to. I don't want to half ass it. I want to make sure that I'm going to have the time. And I'm going to have the energy. And I'm going to have the resources to help that person out. In that specific night. So. But the, these are things that, that, that are up and coming in my page soon it's it, it's just Elvis brought that out of me as well like I could be doing a lot more in this page and I'm not so Elvis always and you guys it's not Elvis has a lot to do with it but you guys have the most to do with it because of the generosity you guys show me I need to pay it for it and it, this page, I would love it to be about strictly positivity and love and, and, and just helping each other out. Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. But I would, for the for my sake and for your own sake, because I, I wouldn't want to ruin the good thing that we got going on right now. If you guys hear another or see another comment that is negative or anything like that, do me a favor. It's better to just ignore it. Because it's going to end up getting deleted anyway when I see it. I don't want to have no type of negativity. I want whoever comes into my page and watches a reaction from me. Even the comment section is as positive as possible. We have too much negativity out there. For me to add more negativity on top of that. I want to help the problem. I don't want to add, it to, add to the problem. And I don't want you guys to be in the crosshairs of some dumbass that wants to say something stupid on the pit, uh, on the comments below. I really don't. You guys, you guys deserve a lot more respect for what you guys have done for me, and a lot more respect for for the knowledge that you have. This man that we that we love and we, and we watch 
uh, every single day. Elvis does something to, to, to your soul when you, when you see things like these. Um, an hour or so before the show. When my wife was, gosh, nine or ten, and her sister was maybe a couple years older than that, uh, they would uh, go down to Graceland and uh, in, this, in the hopes of seeing Elvis. And they would go down there almost every weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Wow. And many times he would actually come down to the gate and shake hands and talk to people. And, and he did it often. Sometimes he did it by himself. Um, Sandra remembers one time he actually came down riding a horse and was talking to him and, and that just made their day, you know, and it just, again. Bro, if I live that close to Graceland, I'll be camping out in the yard. But what megastar do you know that'll walk to his front lawn and just talk to his, his fans? Have a conversation, shake hands, and kiss babies, and do all that. Now, granted, and back in those days, it was a little bit safer to do it. Right now, there's all types of crazy people out here. Like, I, like I'm so sad about this world and how everyone's acting. But like I said, my vibe gang, all of you, all sixty thousand of you, have given me faith in humanity again. There's so many good people. And you know, I know because there's 60,000 of you. There's 60,000 of you that are just hardworking, good-hearted people. We should make our own revolution. We're going to call each other the Elvenites. And everybody wears a jumpsuit with swords. And was talking to him, and, and that just made their day, you know. And it just, again, shows the type of person that he is, that, uh, that wow. he would do that. When Elvis started getting that money and it started becoming, he wanted to share it. He was a sharing person. And his dad got in early confrontations with him about giving so much away. He would say, son, you know, we're pretty wealthy. Man, you're giving people houses. And you're giving guys on television, you don't even know Cadillacs. And people would walk off the street in a dealership, you buy him a Cadillac, and and uh, pretty soon the the bank account is going to get a little is going to take a, a hit. And Elvis would say, "Look, Dad," he said, "Look, I enjoy giving stuff away to people. Said, That's how I get my enjoyment." He said, uh, "I can go out and do a tour." He said, "I can do a tour in six weeks and make two million dollars." He said, "I'm not worried about money." What? A tour. He said, "I can do a tour in six weeks and make two million dollars." He said, I'm not worried about money. He said, That's insane. That is absolutely insane. He's like, man, it's a bad cow gets going down. Do, do a tour 26 weeks, man. I got two million. I'm good. Don't even worry about it. You see, they see that mentality that he had. Like it's nothing. What I get my enjoyment. Elvis buys the stuff that he buys just to give it away. It is it, it doesn't bother him. It, it's whatever. I'll get some more. Don't worry about it. Like he said, like it's nothing. But that's the type of heart he has. He doesn't care about the money. Money to him comes second before his fans. You name me another artist that is like that. And I'll show you a person that learned it from Elvis. This is, this is a teacher, man. He's a teacher. It's just it's just sad that, that not everybody thinks that way. Or anybody, not, not everybody has that type of heart. And that's why I'm so, so grateful to have you guys in my life. Because the love is real. And I'm not even talking about like, y'all don't even have to donate no more. Y'all don't have to do any of that. Y'all never had to. But you guys do because you guys love what I do and support what I do. And you guys have a generous heart and you just want to do what Elvis and pay it forward. And that right there is, is what it's all about. 
And it's a beautiful thing, man. We, we Let's spread the word, shall we? He said, I'm doing two in six weeks to make $2 million. He said, I'm not worried about money. He said, I want, I want to make people happy. For all of Elvis Presley's accomplishments, I think his greatest joy, other than Lisa Marie, was giving to others. He loved to see the smiles and, and the looks on people's faces when he gave them things. He really was a generous and kind man. The true measure of a man's success is not what he achieves and acquires for himself in his lifetime, but what of himself he gives to others. Elvis Presley touched the lives of millions and millions of people the world over. With his music, his movies, and his live performances, Elvis brought joy to the hearts of people everywhere. And even today, over three decades after his untimely death, Elvis's music and his legacy continue to have a lasting and profound impact on... Hence, vibe reactions. To this day, we're in 2023. And I'm getting into a journey that I would have, 10 years ago, would have never thought that I was going to take. And it has been one of the best journeys that I've taken. Because it made me, it made, it showed me how ignorant I really was back when I was younger. It, it showed me how ignorant I was thinking. And, and me being, me being one of those, me seeing this, Help spread the word to all the rest of the ignorant people that don't know the true story about this man. You can say what you want about Elvis. I've said it many a times. He stole black people music. He didn't steal his voice, did they? There's a million people right now that do covers of everybody else's music. So what's the difference? Now, and somebody made a point in a, in a comment that I would like to put out there right there. You know, in order for you to use a certain sound when you're doing music you have to get it cleared by that artist so if you're going to do a cover of somebody you have to get that cleared in order for you to use it or not you're not going to get any revenue from that or from what you do because you won't be able to put it out so how is it that he stole it if he got the artist's permission to use it And not only that, let me find out how you steal a voice. Do you have a voice box that is magical? You throw it at somebody's forehead and you take their voice out and you can put it in yours? No. This is what I'm talking about. It's about, it's about logic. Think about it logically. Stop thinking about it with your heart. I've always said this. When you get into critique somebody, you always have to think logically with your brain. Stop feeling with your heart. Half the, not half the time. There's sometimes the heart, that's just you, what you feel at the moment. That's not a fact. Come to me with facts about Elvis and then I'll shut up. And so far, no one has. I got this one guy saying I'm a fake reactor. <laughs> what? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Nah, I'm fucking real. <laughs> I ain't nothing fake about it. I'm not a I I'm not an AI. <laughs> this is a real nigga. Like what the fuck are you talking? <laughs> music and his legacy continue to have a lasting and profound impact on music and popular culture around the world. And yet, for all Elvis's phenomenal success as an entertainer, perhaps the king's most endearing quality and the greatest of his legacies was his enormous generosity to others who were less fortunate than he was. I always felt like... Now you have to understand something else, though. Elvis got... Elvis is the definition of getting it from the mud. Elvis' parents wasn't rich. He was po-po. He was living in poverty. Elvis didn't have this. Elvis had him. That's all he had. His voice, his looks... His hips. That was all hip. So he wasn't this, this rich boy that mommy and daddy paid for him. No. He got it from the mud, man. This man struggled his whole career. 
But look what he does to make himself happy. He gives to other people. Where the hell have you ever heard that before? Okay. Don't tell me nothing about Elvis. Stop. Shout out to Joey. Me and Joey had a conversation. Shout out to Joey, man. I love you, brother. Rosity to others who were less fortunate than he was. I always felt like um, he tried to give back to his fans more than he took from them. And wow. when, um, whenever he gave a, a piece of jewelry away, on the, like on the stage, when he'd take off a ring and, get, and hand it to a, to a fan, um, it was just an act of love on his part. He just loved his fans, and, and they're, they're, what made him, they're what made him work and why he worked, why he worked so hard was his fans. He loved his fans. We had a guy in a group named Richard Davis, who was kind of sort of, he'd been with Elvis, he'd been in the Memphis Mafia, he'd been Elvis' stand in a bunch of his movies, Memphis guy, was a record promoter, and he was down on his luck. And Elvis heard about it and he sent for him. He said, Richard, I hear you down on your luck. And it was, holidays were approaching, he said, yeah, Elvis. Elvis gave him a brand new Cadillac convertible and 10,000 cash. He said, maybe this will help you out. And he said, thanks a lot, Elvis. On March 25, 1961, Elvis performed a benefit concert at the Block Arena at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This performance raised over $65,000 toward the building of the USS Arizona Memorial, which was completed the following year. This donation made Elvis Presley the single biggest individual donor to the Pearl Harbor Memorial. In 1975, at a concert in Asheville, North Carolina. Mr. Lee, your ring! Mr. Lee! We look at the screen. Look, he's wearing your ring. In 1975, at a concert in Asheville, North Carolina, Elvis went on stage wearing a huge opal and diamond ring on his finger. This ring was reportedly worth between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars. During the concert, Elvis saw a little girl in the front row who was sitting in a wheelchair. He took the ring off his finger and gave it to the little girl. There was no publicity about this, just the enormous satisfaction that Elvis got from seeing the look on the little girl's face. Elvis reportedly bought close to $700,000 worth of jewelry in the last five years of his life, most of which he gave away. I was See what I'm talking about? That's two shows. And he's like, don't even worry about it. Come on, man. Like, that type of stuff is amazing. That's These are the type of things that is good to hear and, and listen to. That's, dude, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of artists that, that do it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of generous artists out there like that. But back in those days, the things that he was giving away was literally life-changing. All right, so let's say you that he gives he gives that he gave let's not say it happened. He gave that girl that ring. It's thirty forty five thousand dollar ring. Girls in a wheelchair. You know that the parents could sell that ring for probably twice of what it's worth to take care of medical bills, to take care of the house, to take care of her medicine, to take care of whatever she needs to be taken care of. When he was giving stuff away back in those days, it was a life-changing thing that he was doing for that person. He wasn't giving away twenty dollars, thirty dollars. He wasn't. He wasn't just head shaking people, say, "Hey, all right, cool," and then leave. He was just signing autographs and then trying to run to his limo. He wasn't doing any of that. When he gave, he gave to change someone's life. To I have it. Why shouldn't you not have it? And that's exactly why it is good to work and bust your ass to earn what you make. You learn how to appreciate it better because he came from poverty. He came from, from the hood. He made it, he made the money, and he, want, he was giving it away quicker than what he could make it. And that's what you call the king of humanity. Talk to them, sir. In the last five years of his life, most of which he gave away. I was sitting by the stage, and uh, he came over to me, and he says, "Where's?" He leaned over, and he says, "Where's your case?" And he's up there singing, you know. Where's your case? And I said, "It's right here." He said, "Set it up here." 
I set my case up on the stage, and he just got jewelry out of it, and he was giving it to people uh, on the, the people on the front row that would, wow. and he was just giving away all this jewelry. The difference in Elvis and everyone else was that that he so he had his personal jeweler open up his case and just start giving people jewelry. It. Boy. When I make it, I'm going to go on stage and I'm just going to start giving out my hats. That's what I'm going to do. I'm broke. I can't give away stuff like that. Elvis is amazing, bro. Like, man, if only if only a lot more people could see, something, see this. Like, and understand who he really was, man. It's, this will be an eye opener for Elvis. If you if you are a first time reactor, or you think about doing reactions, and you think about getting into Elvis, I think um, Elvis in the Black Community Part One and Two, and this should be your first three reactions. So you could just go ahead and destroy that stigma of what you think Elvis is about. Once you see those three videos, you can actually listen to the music and enjoy it. Instead of criticizing or having already your own thoughts on what he's saying. So if you're a reactor, man, that, that's my that's my tip to you. I set my case up on the stage, and he just got jewelry out of it, and he was giving it to people uh, on the, the people on the front row that would, and he was just giving away all this jewelry. The difference in Elvis and everyone else was that that he obviously loved his fans. He was so, he was so honest. You just didn't doubt that he was, he was pure as a driven snow. He was just a good, good person. And people... Hey, you can't be talking about others like that while he's moving his, his hips and his legs like that, sir. Why y'all put that clip in? Ain't nobody, right there when he did that, no one was paying attention to what you were saying, sir. No matter what, man, Elvis was a sexy bitch. It don't matter what. He could sing horribly. He is still a sexy man. He was a driven snow. He was just a good, good person. And people knew that. His fans knew that. Elvis's great spirit of generosity, giving, and compassion for those less fortunate than him lives on to this day. Former wife Priscilla Presley and daughter Lisa Marie Presley Continue Elvis's philanthropy and honor his memory through the Elvis Presley Foundation. The foundation supports charities and community programs such as Presley Place, which provides homeless families up to one year of rent-free housing, child daycare, career and financial counseling, family management guidance, and other assistance. What? Oh, that's different. That is absolutely different. That's life changing right there. That is that's I, I'm pretty I hope that's still running. I hope that's still going. Because that right there, I would have never thought about doing something like that. Were they home homeless families for a year until they get so they could get their stuff together? That is fucking amazing. Career and financial counseling, family management guidance, and other assistance to help people regain their independence and self-esteem. In 1983, the Elvis Presley Memorial Trauma Center was established at the Regional Medical Center in Memphis. It has served over 80,000 level one trauma patients from a six state area. Indeed, there is no greater gift one person can give another in this world than to give of himself. And for all Elvis has given the world through his incredible body of work, his greatest legacy to his millions and millions of fans was his kindness and his generous heart. He liked to see the enjoyment because when, they, when a guy gives you a new Cadillac or gives you a house or gives you a free trip to Hawaii, you become elated and that made him feel good. He didn't play golf, he didn't fish, he didn't hunt, all that stuff. And to give stuff away and make people happy, that's what he enjoyed. Well, you know what can be found Sitting no more alone If you can't come around 
This was the best, one of the best videos I've seen in Elvis, man. This is the type of stuff I love. Man, and just, just to think, he was just one man. One man. And he's probably, he's probably changed millions of people's lives. Or for just his generosity alone. Not counting his music, not counting his movies. Not counting this, put all that to the side. Just Elvis Aaron Presley as a man. If it, if I if I could take anything away from Elvis whole whole history, if Elvis could have done it, anybody could do it. Remember, Elvis was a very very poor man growing up, or a very poor child growing up. He was in poverty. He didn't have the best of the best. He was probably one of those type of living situations where he was getting hand-me-downs for clothes and, and, and mom and dad would nickel and diamond to get food. Come on, man. He didn't get he didn't get famous, get rich, and just forget about where he came from. He saw everybody as an individual. He saw everybody as a human being. You can see him as his fans, saw him as his family. People that supported him, so then he's gonna support that. Like any family should. So you guys are my family. And I support you guys in whatever you I can support you in. The same way that you guys support me on everything I do on this page. I love all of you guys from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you guys so much for you got you guys' generous heart. And for showing me, like I said before. Giving me a little bit more faith in humanity. You guys opened the uh, opened the door for me, and, and I appreciate everything. And I could see it a million times. I, I just need I I need to find a way to show it to you guys, cause you guys are the truth, and I love all of you. So I'm gonna talk to you guys later. You guys have a great night. I'm sorry this video went so long. But you have guys, you guys have a great night. I got another Elvis coming tomorrow. I got you. And I love all of you. Go out in the morning, right now, depending where you are in the world. Go out and help somebody. Just help one person. Two of you can afford it. Three of you got it like that. We need to start shooting. You guys already know. You guys been doing it. You guys, this is all news to you guys. Talk about the ones that have it. Let's go out there and let's go help somebody with love and without expecting anything back in return. I love all of you guys, and I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace!